for God's Word. Pastor Franklin, the resident pastor of Kodesh Family Church Atlanta, comes your way with this refreshing and inspiring word that will motivate you to do your best for God. Join Pastor Franklin now as he ministers the Word of God. to talk about visitations visitations you know one of the things that builds churches and makes a church feel like a family is visitations everybody wants to belong to a church where you feel cared for you feel loved you feel like oh this person has become like a, a family to me. Like you, you sense that you are in a family. And that is caused by visits. Pastor visiting the sheep, other leaders visiting church members, and even church members visiting other church members. That is what creates that family culture or environment within churches because I can promise you that if you visit another church member you will become closer to the person yeah if there is somebody here you are not so close to if you visit that person the relationship becomes more enriched you know in a church during the service Sometimes people are uptight, you know, time is scarce. People can't really open up and talk to you. But if you visit them outside of church, maybe in their home, at a coffee shop or something, they are more relaxed. That is why that is when they will they, they will tell you all the stories. Chop bar, yeah. No, here we don't say chop bar, we say maybe cafe, grill, like axe. In Ghana we say axe chop bar, but here we say cafe and grill. They'll tell you all the all the stories that you don't know about them. You know. So visitation really creates that environment that we all want to be part of. You know, and not just any kind of visitation, you know. Maybe you see a, a, a nice looking young lady, you are not married, said, I'm going to visit the person. Not, not those types of visitations. But the visitation that I'm talking about are spiritual events, you know. If you see Luke 1944. Luke 1944. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Visitation is a very spiritual thing. When a pastor wants to visit you, or another church, a leader, one of the leaders in the church is visiting you, or another church member is even visiting you. It's a spiritual thing. It's one of the most important things that you can experience as a Christian, that somebody came to visit you. Because the right kind of visitation is first an expression of the word of God. Somebody visits you, they share something from the Word of God. It could be something that was recently preached. Maybe share oh, his understanding. And it helps you to also maybe understand more. There are things that a pastor can share for a long while. But maybe you don't get it. But when another person comes and they talk about the same thing, it becomes easier to understand. 
Because you are able to ask certain questions that you may not want to ask the pastor. Amen. If somebody is sleeping by you, tell them you just started. Stop sleeping. <laughs> Visitation also shows um, an expression of prayer. When you visit somebody, pray for the person. Take a minute or two and say a prayer for the person as you are about to leave. Pray into their life. Because we are Christians, and Bible says that the fervent, uh, the what? Yes. It makes tremendous power available. So it doesn't have to be the pastor before a prayer works for you. Somebody can come and visit you and just pray for you. Say, oh, what are you going to say? Okay, let's pray as they are leaving. It can lead to breakthroughs in your life. So if I can visit you and it will not cause a breakthrough. But a church member may visit you and pray and it will cause a breakthrough. Because your, your, your breakthrough may be with that person. God is mysterious. Amen. And visitation is an expression of love. One of the best ways to show love to somebody who is a Christian is to visit them. Visitation shows love. For you to drive from your house to my house is an expression of love. One day a pastor said, I like my church members very much. And I wish I could show my love to all the single ladies in the church by marrying them. <laughs> But you cannot show your love to ladies in the church by marrying them. One of the ways to show love is to visit people. Look, sometimes people are going through stuff. They just don't have anybody to share with. And the fact that you came, you may not solve the problem. But the fact that you came to visit itself helps a person to... to like the load becomes easier. Many people just want to know that somebody cares for them. Like you are not alone. So when you visit someone, it, it touches them. They may not say it, but it ministers love. So when we were in the university, the different halls of residence, we had one that was like eight floors. And where we grew up, there, there was no elevator. Right. Why church people? What are you discussing? I'm preaching. You are talking among yourself and laughing. They should look at me. Otherwise, you know the way the disciples were scattered all over the world. <laughs> I'll scatter you into the church. You sit in different places. On the eighth floor, they, they have a name for the eighth floor. They say Domia Bright. It means, if you love me, come. That floor, Africa, the ladies' hall. The last floor, they call it Domiabra. If you love me, come. But it is only love that will make you climb eight floors to go and visit somebody. No elevator, eight solid floors. I mean, the first level is easy. Even if you are passing, you can visit somebody. But when somebody comes to the eighth floor, it shows that the person cares about you. Amen. <laughs> and when you visit another person, it shows love. It ministers love. You just visit, sit down, you chat a little, then you go. And you know, the reason why I'm preaching this is, it's not just pastors who should visit people. And I'm, I'll get into scriptures. It's not just pastors who should visit. But church member to church member can visit with clean motives, not ulterior motives. Yes. So you know, you know, Beatrice cooks a, a very good watch here on Sundays. So every Sunday you are going to visit her. That one, that one is a bad, bad motive. Saturday. 
Amen. We, you, you need to visit people. Pastor needs to visit people. You also need to visit people. That is how a family environment will be created in the church. Amen. And one of the things that prophet does in first love is sometimes he declares something like a visitation week. National visitation week. Everybody visit somebody. And he said, yeah, everybody go somewhere, visit somebody, visit some visit somebody you don't know, or you are not close to in the church. And Revival USA is also declaring National Visitation Week for two weeks. Please show my flyer. I said, I don't know. It's not, I'm not making it up. I sent a flyer on the, on the page. For two weeks, visit somebody. Every week, visit one person. Zoe, wouldn't you like it if somebody comes all the way to Augusta to visit? No, it's two hours. I get it. But if somebody shows up and says, Oh, I came to visit you. Where is a good eating place? Let's go and sit down. It's, it, will, it will minister to her. And that's the Domia bra. If you laugh, be careful. It takes two hours. Amen. So, look, in, in the next two weeks, visit somebody. Find somebody in the church you are not too close to. And visit the person. Don't visit your close friends yet. You know? Mommy here is coming from Athens. You may not know. One hour in. Go and visit her. So it will change the relationship. Next time you see it here in church, the relationship is, is richer. Because you sat down, you talked about different things. In church, everybody will be like, Oh, yeah, I'm blessed and highly favored. But maybe when you visit her and you are talking, you say, that, Girl, sit down, let me tell you. Then they start breaking up different stories. And before I realize, even your families are related. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true. One, one of our missionaries came from Madagascar. And when he came, his place is far. So I asked him to go to Smyrna Church. And then um, we went to visit him once. And when we were talking, he mentioned a certain guy. I knew his last name, but I didn't connect. But when he mentioned the guy, then I asked him a few questions. I realized he's the same guy that my classmate was his brother. His elder brother. He said, ah, if he's your elder brother, he said, I know that that my classmate, his family is connected to my wife's family. And lo and behold, they, 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 like he's my in-law. Hey! <laughs> Just like that. But that conversation wouldn't have occurred in church. Your church is a short period of interaction. You know, many people would open up if you just visit and you just talk. Amen. Amen. That is how we build that church family. So I was saying that here, yeah, we, we, we it's, it's a national visitation week. Every member of the church should receive a visit. Mr. Flo, it's a long time that I visited you. But every member of the church should receive a visit. So you should also visit somebody. When is the last time you visited somebody? No, not don't visit because of food. <laughs> visit to share a word. Visit to encourage the person. Visit to pray for the person. 
Amen. No, he could. After church, he just what? Oh, Charlie, let's have visitation week. This week, when are you free? Uh, just pick a time. Visit. Not a long time like you are there for three hours. Just, <laughs> just visit the person, sit down, chat, you know, a few things. Look, if they, by the grace of God, they offer you spring rolls, eat. Oh. But don't go expecting that there will be jollof there. And then share something from the word. And after you share something from the word, pray for them. You, the person visiting, must pray for the person, the house that you, you, you are in. Amen. Amen. And they can also pray for you. You know. So every church member needs a visit. Why? Because like I'm saying, not every problem can be solved in church. Not every problem can be solved in church. Some problems can only be solved in a more relaxed environment where people feel free to talk. And I have visited people and sometimes I go with others to visit. And the problem the guy has, I don't have a solution, but the person I brought has a solution for the person. So don't be expecting a pastor per se. No, only a pastor can visit me. Be open to other church members visiting you. Because they may know someone who knows another person who has an uh, answer to your problem. Or they myself, they themselves may have an answer to the problem that you have. It's only because you haven't spoken to them at length. Every church member needs uh, or deserves a visit because Jesus died for them. Yeah, he died for them. He left everything and died for them. They deserve a visit. Your neighbor, the one sitting by you on the chair, deserves a visit from you. You can look the person sideways and say, yeah, I, I, I deserve a visit. And then look behind, the person behind you too. Then you say, like, I, I deserve a visit. I deserve a visit from you. Amen. <laughs> you see, if we do it, if we do it, it will create that family environment in the church. You come to church, you are happy. Like everybody is like your family. Otherwise, the church becomes more like People you know, you are just polite with, oh, hello, how are you doing? Then you walk and you go your way. But you need to connect. Everybody in the church should be a family. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor, you've been preaching. Where are the scriptures? So let's look into some scriptures. Jeremiah 23 verse 2. Jeremiah 23 verse 2. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. So this one, God is speaking to pastors. That you have not visited the sheep. Like some having visited him. Uh, 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 this week I have to visit him. You have not visited the sheep. I mean, when I came here, I read the scripture and he's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> And if I haven't visited you, you can text me so that I'll start with those I haven't visited before. (laughs) 
and have not visited them. The fact that he's saying you haven't visited them means that he was expecting that the pastor will visit. But if you take the pastor away, God is expecting that every member of the church will be visited. That visiting church members, a church member should receive a visit. Amen. And many years ago when Jesus came to visit the earth, And he started a church. The church was started by Jesus. His original pastor. The Bible says that no other foundation can anyone lay except the foundation which is laid by Christ. I think 1 Corinthians 3, 11 or so. So Jesus is the original pastor of the church. Now the Bible says that the pastors have not visited the sheep. And when Jesus was about to leave the earth, John 19, from, from 28 to 30, he says something. He says that it is finished. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I test. Verse 29. Now there was, there was set a vessel full of vinegar. And they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on his supper and put it in his mouth. Okay. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is finished means that everything is done. There's nothing more to do. But visiting God's people does not stop. But here Jesus is about to leave and says that it is finished. But it can't really be finished. Visitation must continue. That is why he did two things. Before he died, he started training his disciples to visit. If you see Luke, Luke 10 from verse 1 to 9. Luke 10 verse, just read and see what he's telling the people. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither pest nor... Okay, let's go on verse 5. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Heal the sick that are there, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come now unto you. Look at the parts of the thing they say. There, there would be preaching. Go into every house. Go into the homes. This, be in the home. If they offer you something, eat. Sit with them. Chat. At the end, you preach the kingdom of God unto them. It's a visit. So go into every home. You could have said, go and stand at a stadium and preach and expect them to come. So the church is not a preaching center where we just preach or people should just come. The church must visit. Like There must be visiting into homes, sharing bread, sharing the word, and preaching. Just go, go into the city. Whatsoever house you enter, 
What is offered you? Eat. Stay there. And then preach the word that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'm saying, go into a home. Sit. If they offer you spring rolls, say so whatever is offered to you, you eat. And then share the word. He says that, preach to them that the kingdom of God is near. He says, share the word. Encourage somebody in the word. And pray for them. I believe this Jesus was using to prepare the people. Because when he leaves, they need to do things like that. So it was more like a practical practicals. You know, I was looking for practical something, but practicals will work. That they are doing. Once he's there, he's supervising. Go into the homes. Learn how to go. Learn how to ask, oh, can I come into your house, sit down, share the word, how to socialize with people, and then pray for them. And then when he was about to leave too, I mean, just in case the disciples would, would fail him, John 14, verse 18. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I am not abandoning you. I will come to you. I will visit you. I will be there. Visitations can't stop. When visitations stop in a church, it becomes a church where people are very individualistic. And they are different cliques, you know what I mean? Maybe these three people are my friends, or these are the people I flow with. <clears throat> but you don't see that <coughs> connection that you need to see in a family. Amen. Amen. You know, the la- la- last week, uh, two weeks ago, <coughs> Dr. Iran sent me a text. He said, well, I want Ifia to come to church. Can we get somebody to drop her off? I said, no problem. But if we have connected well with her, it will not even come to me. Because you yourself will go. Oh, if you are going to work, let me bring Ifia to church. And after church, I'll take Ifia home. We are not yet connected. We don't really have that kind of family uh, environment yet. Because when your brother is going to work, you know the situation. And you may decide, to say, oh, you know, let Micah and Myra, let, um, let them come to me. You go and do your things. After church, after work, you come and get them. Is that not what happens? Yeah. Let's build a church where people feel like families. It's not just your children who are your family. But everybody's child feels like family. So that I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come. So you need to visit somebody in these two weeks. Even if every week you visit one person. <coughs> so we may cover everyone. That's a young man there. Alfred is looking behind him. You are sitting against the wall and you are looking behind you. Is that it? Is that it? Is that anything behind you? Uh, yeah. He should receive a visit from somebody. Or that I'm, I'm just visiting you. Amen. Or you don't understand my message. I don't like what I'm sharing. That is how to build a church. That is where you are so connected that if a problem arises in your life, 
It's like you have 30 people who are ready to step in. Everybody is there because everybody is like a small family. If your sister has an issue, all your brothers and sisters will know. Maybe you have a family WhatsApp group already. Everybody knows instantly. So, okay, even as you take the children on Monday, better will be home on Tuesday. Then maybe let this person... Everybody is connected. And that is how the church must be. Amen. And like I was saying, visitation is primarily the work of a pastor. It's true. But even Jesus started preparing people to do visitations. And sometimes, you know, there's a principle in the Bible called uh, sharing the burden. God told Moses, look, the, the burden of caring for the people can be too much. So get me some people and I will anoint them. It will become an extension of you. So instead of you doing the work, suddenly there are 70 of you. And the 70 of you are doing the work. So if we all decide to visit, it becomes like an extension of the pastor. And suddenly everybody in the church feels loved. Everybody feels loved. Everybody feels cared for. Because if we don't do these things, so one day you wake up and realize, ah, some people have had a party in the church. They didn't invite you. Or your children. Because it becomes like a small click. You know, I'm connected to these people. But if, <laughs> if we are all connected, it's, it's a family. Amen. I want us to build a church. If by the grace of God, we become a very large church, thanks be to God. But whatever size we are, people should feel connected. Like somebody needs something. You shouldn't feel it's a problem to call him up and just ask him up. Because you are connected. But if we are not connected, that is when it will become difficult. So, Pastor, can you ask Ima and see if... <laughs> Why haven't you connected with him up to now? So that you can just talk to him yourself. Amen. Has a visitation been a blessing to you before? So, I... I grew up in a Presbyterian church. My mother is still in prison. There's nothing you can tell her in this world that will make her leave the Presby church and join a church like Lighthouse or Caris. No, no, it's not going to work. And then when I came to the U.S., I found a church that was close to Georgia Tech. And I didn't have a car. I can walk, or and later I got myself a bicycle, so it became easier. Look, there have, been a, there have been days where bicycle felt like luxury. God, God, God has been good. <laughs> when you've walked that distance a while, then suddenly you get a bicycle, it's like you're on top of the world. And I was going to that church. Then later somebody invited me into a lighthouse and I visited. One of the reasons why or things that made it easy to stay. Is that I was visited by Reverend Patrick and Nick, this guy. I was there and they called me. <laughs> and they said, oh, we are in your area. <laughs> we are in your area. Can we pass by and say hello? Then later I realized that they weren't in my area. <laughs> They actually drove to come there, but sometimes we make it easy for the person. They'll say something like, oh, we're just in your area around the corner, you know. 
So can we just pass by so you don't feel like it's a bedding. They are already in the area. And they came to visit me. And when they visited me, it's just I was talking to them or I was saying in my head, these people. They want me to join the church. That's why they are coming to visit me. <laughs> so when they left, I told my wife, this light has to put this what they were. That's why they came to visit. And I'm here, so it worked. <laughs> it worked. So many people will be scattered if we don't visit people. Many people will be scattered. There's a scripture, Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, um, verse 6. Ezekiel 34, verse 6. Say, My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and upon every hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. There is somebody you must search for. There is somebody you must seek after. Somebody who maybe probably have not been in church for a while. There is somebody you can reach that I can reach. You know, sometimes when you show up as a pastor, people put up defenses. You know, sometimes I can even sense it, like when you call somebody, you, 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 you can hear the hesitation in their voice. Uh, okay, pastor has called me. What is he calling me for? You know? <laughs> so sometimes I have to tell people, oh, you haven't done anything. I'm just calling you then. Suddenly you can see that the voice changes. They, they are more relaxed. Yeah. So there's somebody you can easily reach that I cannot reach. Somebody you can visit. It doesn't have to be long. 30 minutes, just sit, chat with the person, and move on. But that 30 minutes will mean a lot to the person. Look, many people do not receive visitors. That's the truth. In America, yeah. In Ghana, it's like a communal system. Your, your family is around. Even your neighbors, your neighbors will even come and check on you. If they haven't seen you for a while. But there are many people here who don't receive anybody. Nobody calls on them. They can be there for six months. Nobody has knocked on their door before. Unless the person is for, for, to come in to do maintenance. <laughs> if you drove out with these people, some areas, they don't allow them to enter. Amazon shipment, maintenance, and that's all. Nobody comes into the home to say, how are you doing? How is life going on? How is life treating you? Oh, you have this problem? <laughs> Yours is easy. Let me tell you mine. <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly, you begin to put things into perspective. You see that, look, things are not that bad. We can make it. Amen. Amen. Visiting people ministers love to them. And if you want to demonstrate love for other Christians, visit. Spend some time. Sit. Chat with somebody. So one day, um, a church member's husband died. Not in this church. Some other church. The husband died, and the pastor. The pastor didn't know what to do. So, and most of the time, pastors don't know what to do. We only just open this Bible. What does the Bible say? So he went to. When he went to visit the lady, she was crying. So he asked her to come and sit in his car, and he just started driving. And he was talking to her. So he drove around maybe 285, started from Spaghetti, went all the way, came back through, what's her name, Dan Woody. He got back to Spaghetti again, dropped the person off. 
and then went away. He was feeling very, very useless because he couldn't see any impact. The person was still crying. A few years down the line, somebody's, another lady's husband died. And he said, hey, this one again. <laughs> so he decided to take the lady whose husband is just dead to the one whose husband died a few years ago. He said, oh, since your husband died a few years ago, you have some experience. So you talk to her on how you manage to overcome. Okay. So he was expecting the lady would give some wild advice or something. The lady said, she was talking to the one who was just, whose husband was just dead and crying. He said, the hand that is holding you and the person realized that she was talking about him. <laughs> he said, the hand that is holding you is the same hand that helped me, helped me to go through. Then it, it dawned on him that that day, just sitting in the car, just talking, feels like, what am I doing? I'm not saying anything useful. Just driving around, talking to her. It didn't even seem like it was benefiting her because she was still crying more. But in the midst of the tears, whatever he was saying was still ministering to the person and comforting the person. Look, I tell you, there's somebody in the church that when you say, I have been through this and what you are going to be well, it will be more than pastor praying for them and laying oil on them. Sometimes just knowing that, look, we are all connected. Somebody is there to help you. It means a lot to people. Amen. So he said, two weeks, visitation week. Everybody should visit someone. Make an appointment after church. Talk to somebody. And find people you don't know. Because it will help you to break... Um, that barrier, you know. This nice gentleman here is called Kujo. Maybe you haven't visited him before. You, you, can, you, can, you can decide to visit him. You are visiting Kujo. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's two weeks. Just find somebody to visit. We have students. You can visit Sharon at school. And when you visit her at school, take her to the cafeteria and buy the food for her. Look, sometimes people, okay, let, let me address something before I end. Sometimes it's not that people don't want visitations. But sometimes where you are staying, the living condition, maybe I've been staying with someone Oh, you know, maybe you cry. You're even fighting with your husband. You haven't said hello. Then suddenly somebody's coming to visit in the house. Or something in the house may feel, make you feel uncomfortable. You can do a visitation outside the home. Oh, I, I recommend find a Chick-fil-A place and sit. Do a Chick-fil-A visit. Okay, yes. <laughs> It's a commissioner conflict of interest. <laughs> or a coffee shop, Starbucks. A visitation doesn't have to be in the home. Let me clarify it. So that doesn't become a problem. It doesn't need to be in the home. It could be, yeah, it could even meet in a Costco. <laughs> Why is everybody looking this way? <laughs> the, the Costco and Saga team is that way. <laughs> you 
You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be in the home. You could visit somebody outside the home. You could be you just meet at some place, just grab something to eat. You know, you could even do a, a, a Chinese buffet visitation. You can the food is a lot. We, we, are, we are just so Costco is this way, Chinese buffet is this way. Uh, they say you are Chinese buffet. <laughs> Today I'm taking you to Chinese buffet. That would be uh, our visit. Yeah, just uh, uh, just a simple place. It could be even in the person's house in the driveway. You pull up, you sit in the car, you just chat a minute. Just respect people's privacy. You know, somebody is a bit hesitant. It doesn't mean they don't like you. You don't know what is going on in the home. So you could meet anywhere. You know, any, any, any words, but <laughs> a vis- <laughs> you know, a visitation just means showing up, you know, being present, you know. So let's visit people. Don't leave the young people out, the high schoolers. You know, Debbie, has somebody visited you before? I haven't visited you before. Oh, when I visited mommy, it wasn't you. Oh. Because I can remember coming to your house, but you said it wasn't your visit. It's for mommy. Okay. Now, I thought I was visiting everybody in the house. No problem. But let's do it. Let's, let's build a church where everybody feels connected. Everybody is a family. My children feel like your children. Your children feel like my children. Your issues are my issues. When you are down, we are all there. When you are happy and celebrating, we are all there. Let's build this family. Let's build a church. I hope you've been blessed. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Father, we just want to say thank you for this chance to look into your word, speak into our hearts, Lord, and help us that we would put into practice what we learn, that we'll be able to build a church where everyone feels connected. It feels like a big family. Everyone is cared for. (coughs) As we step out this week and next week, living in obedience, Lord, may you also bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. And maybe you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus, or you are watching us on social media, you haven't given your life to Jesus yet. We are going to say a prayer. And if you want to, if you are genuine, just say it with us. It's a prayer of confession. The Bible says you must believe in your heart that God sent Jesus to die for you. And then you must confess him as your Lord and your Savior. These two things help you to be saved. So if you have not given your life to Jesus before, or you want to rededicate your life because after giving your life a few things have passed under the bridge but you want to get more serious and dedicate your life to Jesus you can still pray with us so let's all pray Heavenly Father I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me I accept the free gift of salvation come into my life Be my Lord and Savior. From this day, I belong to you. My name is, and then mention your name, and say, write this name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you gave your life to Jesus, 
We would like you to reach out to us. There's a number on your screen, 470-377-2963. Call, text, somebody would <coughs> respond and get back to you. And if you give your life to Christ, we want to give you a free book. It's called Key Facts for New Believers. It will help you to grow as a Christian. So just reach out and it will be yours. Amen. God bless you for listening to this message. Subscribe to Kodesh Atlanta on Facebook and YouTube or reach out to us by calling or texting the number plus one four seven zero three seven seven two nine six three for more information and upcoming events. Thank you and stay blessed.